Welcome. Thanks for coming. This is the Global Leadership Summit. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm Steve Hargadon, and this is Lucy Gray. We're co-chairs of the Global Education Conference, which has now morphed into four events a year. We're really happy that you're here, uh, and we're really appreciative. I'm going to express thanks to Ed Moto for hosting today. If you're from Edmodo, will you raise your hand? Thank you so much. Okay, so um, we also want to introduce our leadership team. So if you're on our leadership team, will you stand? So Adina. Adina. So uh, Cleary Von Lee from Global Oneness, and uh, Dana Mortensen from World Savvy, and uh, Brandon Wiley from Global Ed Leader, and Adina Popa, whose title is way too long, so we're just going to say from Loudoun County. Good. And, oh, and Mark Potter from VIF. We got Dana Cleary, Brandon, Julie Lindsay's not here, but she's been a part of our team, and Adina. Good. Okay, so um, we also want to thank our sponsors. So if you're here from a sponsoring organization, would you stand? That would include VIF, Wonderment, Jamie, you can stand for Google. Iron. Iron. Oh, there you are. Jennifer's here. Jennifer. Okay, so uh, yes, this is actually a really impressive list. And we're now, what, six years, right? And, and we, let, we need to give a real shout out to Iron, who've, who supported the conference the from the very beginning. And it's really nice to see other names on this list, and we really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. OK, so uh, we thought we would take a minute and describe the Global Education Conference, because it's surprising that even within this audience, there may be people who don't know what that event is. Do you want to do, tell the story? We tell the story slightly differently. So if Lucy gets to tell the story, it's long-winded, so I'd better be really quick about this. Um, I started an, an online space uh, using the platform Ning a number of years ago, inspired by Steve because he started Classroom2.0.com in the Ning platform and had I remember like thirteen thousand people the first month, and I was like, whoa, this is pretty cool. So this is like back in two thousand six, two thousand seven. And uh, so I started a Ning, and Steve came to me a couple years later and said, what can we do with your community? my community and um, Blackboard Collaborate to impact education. I'm like, really? We're going to impact education? Um, I still am a little wondering about that, but well, we're, we're getting there. Uh, and so we started doing this online conference in, that's completely virtual, 24 hours around the clock, five days a week. We're kind of paring it down to about three right now. Um, and it's been a really extraordinary experience with, um, particularly because we've gotten to know people all over the world. We've had regular people volunteer to moderate sessions. Uh, we've gotten to know our presenters and keynotes who've generously volunteered their time from year to year. Esther has been one of our keynotes several times. Jamie's keynoted. We've had several other people bring on keynoted. Um, and it's really been an, an, a wonderful journey. But we also feel that face-to-face -face events are not going away and that it's important for us to meet up periodically and for everybody in this space to kind of get to know each other. So we've been doing a meetup at ISTE every year for the past four years where we have uh, two to 300 educators who come together for a very interactive uh, three-hour meetup. And now we're kind of expanding into the leadership space by hosting this event. Um, anything else you want to add to that? Well, that's a nice summary, your version of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the one piece I remember that's not in there is that we were at a COSIN event, a Global Education Day, and we saw all these symposium. people, symposium, and we saw all these people come up to speak, and we're like, we know that person, we know that person, we know that person. We thought, we should do this online. I, you don't remember that. I remember you coming up to me at SLA and asking me about it. Good. Well, I'm glad we have different versions. Okay, so, well, one of the things that I think we feel privileged to have been a part of is this shift toward peer-to-peer -to -peer, uh, professional development. And so Classroom 2.0, Edmodo, I mean, this whole sort of movement toward uh, people connecting with each other. And I think that's what the Global Education Conference does so brilliantly, right, is it allows teachers to present to each other. And for many of them, it's their first time presenting. So if you're a teacher in Nepal on a, on a cell, cellular modem, you may only have three people come into your room. But 
those three, that's a significant event for you to actually have presented from some, from some remote part of the world to other people. So I, I think that uh, we feel really privileged to have been a part of this sort of larger dramatic shift in how we teach each other. It's also about empowerment. It is about empowerment. It's about uh, becoming sort of a proactive agent. And, and ultimately, what we hope is that that, so that moment for the teacher where they feel like they've actually created and then presented gives them a better understanding of the world for their students, where students have become creators. Good. OK, so we have some real fun today. We have three panel discussions. We're going to keep them um, time with good time boundaries so that you know exactly what's happening and you don't feel like it goes on too long, but they're going to be good. We're going to start by showing a film from The Wonderment, a couple of minutes, and then Amy, will you come up and tell us about that? Do you want to talk first or do you want to talk after? I like to talk after. I like to let the kids talk during this. <laughs> okay, so Allison, can we cue that up? that everyone is on the same playing field. There aren't people that are have their PhDs and some kids that don't know how to read or know how to speak. And so it's kind of global learning is making sure everyone has the same access to adopt that information into them. I've never heard that word before. Like, I've never heard that. Can I have a little time to yeah. think? Oh. <sighs> I don't know. But I feel like it's global. So like the whole world learning, I feel like we are always trying to learn something new. So I feel like it's gonna be like learning from each other. If I learn and don't accept it, then that's my choice, but I have the opportunity. When I heard global, like, it's, I mean, it's really new and global means like being with another, being with other friends from another country, that just, that just makes me excited and yeah. First of all, Makes me nervous too. I think it means that you can learn about different cultures, about the environment, and I mean, it's just different all over the world. You learn about different things in the world, like culture, of course, the people, the, um, well, talk about culture is big, and culture is, I think, probably mostly everything about global, uh, global learning. Culture can include as food, like every little things that different from different countries, or like their dances, their tradition, their people, their, uh, and their clothes, everything that different from every country. It doesn't just mean study some subject or something like that. How to make friends can be learning and something like how to communicate with people that can be learning. Being willing to like talk to people about it. Like if someone's from a different culture, be like able to talk to them so you can learn from them. You experience different opinions and attitudes of people about certain things and like have other food. But then there are also a lot of people they just don't open themselves up to learn. And so there's one of my uh, teacher in Vietnam. He come and teach, teach us English, and he and in the beginning he he show us a song in Vietnamese, with like some uh, some guys sing it in Vietnamese, and we were like, who's that guy? And he's like, yes. We were like, Are, is that you? And he's like, yeah. And he can speak Vietnamese fluently. I was like, wow, how, how can you do that? You have to open it, you have to be like it to, to do it. Or if you don't like it, enjoy it, and maybe you can find something that you like it so you can learn it. So I think everything in my life can be learning, I think, yeah. Just not just how to study, how to solve the problem. So just experience is learning, I think, yeah. that we have been asking kids around the world these questions. Um, I, we're a nonprofit organization um, who started out with the question, how do you have, help kids have a sense of belonging in the world? 
and um, what what influence does that sense of belonging have on everything else that they do on learning on on participating in their communities um, and how do kids if they don't feel that sense of belonging to themselves or to the community around them how can they then extend that to a global setting um, and so it's been I'm sure as any as everyone here knows it's a very complex process <laughs> it's something that takes into account like the most vulnerable and exciting parts of what make us human and um, as we have gotten more into that process, we've noticed how important it is for us to constantly be asking kids first and to really be understanding what they are seeing these, you know, it's really easy to get going on something and not necessarily being aware of how they're processing it or how they're internalizing it. Um, and so as we built the wonderment and, um, and the wonderment really is, it's, it's a, we call it an ecosystem, but we realize that's a terrible, uh, cliched phrase at times, but it is. It's, it's, it's a platform, but then it's also community engagement pieces that to interact directly with kids and, and build systems so that they can lead that process themselves. Um, and we've just felt like it, the closest thing that we've found um, that that mimics is the kind of the dance of creativity. And that when we are being creative with each other, um, there's something about it that um, really is uh, how we kind of become these global creators that um, that Steve was talking about. Um, so we feel incredibly privileged, A, to be here with you, but then also to be interacting with these kids on a daily basis. We've, it's, pretty, it's pretty incredible when kids really do see themselves as those creators. I'll mention one thing. We, Global Education Day, we actually talked about the bus that we did uh, with some kids in Guatemala had an idea to serve the kids in the rural part of their neighborhoods that didn't have access to school or libraries. They brought the idea to us that we made a bus basically that went around to these um, rural neighborhoods and these kids because they were involved in the process of actually initiating that idea bringing it and, cre and creating it with us um, we they are now teaching hundreds of kids every week and changing attitudes about literacy in their city and in their country and there's a group a, a group of five high school students that um, that are doing this and so we just we've really seen that power so that's why we made that little film is we just we think that when we ask kids that's the that's the place for all these processes to start so thank you for letting us be here oh thank you okay so before our first panel comes up we're going to give you a question assignment which is to think about your personally most transformative global experience your personally most transformative global experience and turn to your neighbor and talk about that while we invite the first panel up Okay, so that's Betsy, Jamie, Amy, Esther, yeah, I think they know. 